And uh, then we looked at that he had purchased, he purchased with his own blood, we looked at that. And we looked up the word blood and uh, the uh, uh, Passover uh, within and without, without and within, as far as the uh, church being attacked by grievous wolves without, from outside, and then from within, in verse 30, about men shall rise of, uh, within our own ranks. And then it is uh, able to build you up. The Word of God is able to build you up. And we looked at those verses. I think I discussed last week that Jude 20, building you up, and, and I gave that outline because I think I have like seven points there in Jude, verse 20 through verse 25. And there's like five or six words that end in ing, so it makes it really easy for an outline in there. And I do remember I said uh, last week I preached a message that I wrote a letter. I actually set up a table in here and pretended to write the letter. And I read the letter that I wrote to the captain of the ship that we had gone fishing with. And, uh, and the ministry is not for making money. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. I mean, that's not what it's for. And uh, man, when you uh, see on television, uh, you know, send your money here and there and, and so on. Uh, I forget which one of these television people, they said the desk that the guy had was a quarter of a million dollars. Wow. Something like that. Secret compartments. And, and maybe, that's, maybe that's underestimating the value of it. But um, would, there be, uh, would there be others out there that would uh, frown on this building? There would be. Where are you supposed to meet then in their eyes? Oh, you're in the middle of an industrial area. Well, well, where are you supposed to? Meet? Are you supposed to build a building? Uh, I want a storefront downtown on Twenty Two Street. There are guys that do that. It's a great place to have a church. They do them in storefronts. Uh, well, but that's right. Even evil, you got to pay the rent. Well, somebody's got to pay the fare. Yeah, somebody's got to pay the fare. Where, where else would you meet? You can't meet in the temple. It's gone. And you can't meet at the Catholic Church where you got saved out of it. Because the Pope, the, Pope, the priest is going to kick you out. They eventually kick all those people out. Say that again? You would meet at the houses. The uh, Amish still do that. They do that. And then... And how can you tell where they're going to meet, by the way? You can always tell where they're going to meet. Wherever the wagons are and during the week, what's piled up? Anybody know what's piled up on the, uh, the, 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 the benches? The benches, the pews, the pew, wherever they're going to meet, they transfer. Now, I'm not sure all Amish do this, but I've heard this. They move the, the benches to wherever they're going to meet for the next week. And um, you can, and, and why did they move around? <clears throat> they were, it's a tradition and it was for fear of persecution. They kept the, they kept the sheriff of Nottingham on his toes looking for them. <laughs> All right, so wherever they were going to meet so that they wouldn't, they could meet and then break, break up before the authorities came in and broke them up. So, well, anyway, the ministry's not for making money. Uh, I have been asked, and I've been in churches where I've been asked to quote doing work, you know, a plaque or this or that. And man, some of these churches, they have money to burn. And in uh, some of the uh, preachers, uh, man, they wear gold chains and just, it's, it's something. At least it looks like gold. And what they're, they're wearing. And it's it's generally not Baptist churches. In verse 34, uh, that he had worked uh, for his own necessities and those that were with him, <clears throat> and he administered to that. In other words, his preacher can work and support himself. All right, our last page, at least last page that I have. And I don't know if we have enough material to cover 
the balance of, of uh, this hour. Anyway, verse 35. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak. Uh, and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Supporting the weak. Uh, I, I guess, what do we mean by the weak? Supporting the weak. Those that are weak in faith. Okay. Uh, the idea here is, in verse 35, uh, the words of our Lord, of words that are recorded that were uh, never recorded recorded that uh, he ever said it, but it is recorded that it is, anybody have a red letter edition, it is recorded that Jesus did say it. Do you have a red letter? It, are those letters in red? Yeah. It is more blessed to give than to receive. So there are, there are words that are recorded that are never recorded that he said it, that you could go back in the Gospels and say, look, here, here's where he said it. It's just recorded that he said it. And those are his actual words. It's more blessed to give than to receive. And in this case, if you keep in the context of that verse, supporting the weak, uh, weak in faith, what else could they be weak in? Physical things. Physical things. Unable to not, not only spiritual things. Unable, unable to provide for themselves. Unable to provide for themselves. I, I, I would go is supporting the weak that are uh, spiritually weak and physically weak. Can, cannot support themselves. And, uh, and we are to do that. They can be uh, weak in various ways. Can you get weary in doing that? Weary and well, weary and well doing. Let's go ahead. There's a half a dozen verses. Let's go ahead and look them up. Romans 15, verse 1. Romans 15, verse 1. We then that are strong, all right, there are people who are physically strong, ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. So that would be willing to give of yourselves to support both physically and spiritually those that are weak. Bearing their infirmities, the strong. Uh, let's see. It, let's just take them in order. I don't know how they're in order in your, your list there, but 1 Thessalonians 5, those are all those short phrases that are given. There's many of them, and it's, it's talking about the feeble minded. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.14 um, Let's see. I'm in 2 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5.14 Did I say 2? 1 Thessalonians 5.14 Now we exhort uh, meaning to encourage you. Encourage you, brother, more than that are unruly. There are people who are unruly in the church. I mean, we were involved in a church where uh, some of the young kids were unruly. Uh, in, they, they were unruly with their parents. They were unruly in the church. They were unruly with uh, the leadership in the church. And they were unruly then with law, too. And... Uh, there is, uh, my dad would say, the long arm of the law. Ever hear that expression, the long arm of the law? The long arm of the law will eventually hit. Johnny Law. Pardon? Johnny Law. John Law? John Law. <clears throat> my father, it is, if we put, passed up a policeman, he was uh, clocking, he looked in the rearview mirror, and he said, here he comes riding his bicycle. You know, he would joke around a little bit about, but he would always say the long arm of the law, and probably there's other expressions he would say, but uh, warn them that are unruly. There are unruly people. We'll send them to the steel bar hotel. 
And say that again. We'll send you to the steel bar hotel. Oh, the steel bar hotel. Comfort the feeble-minded. There are people who are feeble-minded. There just are. There, uh, uh, you could say, well, you put up with it, but no. Folks, they, they can't help it. They cannot help it. Support the weak. There are people who are weak. Be patient towards not some men, but all men. All men. And that takes, that takes uh, the power of the Holy Spirit to do that, to really minister uh, that way. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Sometimes you can get weary and well-doing in doing those things. You can do that. And how did, how did Paul get through it in 1 Corinthians 15? He did more than they all, but it was strictly by the grace of God. He did it because of the power of the grace of God that was with him. 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, 9. 2 Corinthians 11 is, is uh, where it says uh, the simplicity of the gospel, the simplicity that is in Christ, and it talks about the devil's ministers. Uh, 11, 9, it's in between there. The simplicity that is in Christ is verse 3, and uh, Satan's ministers is... Uh, like verse 13 on, but verse 9, And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. The idea is that they gave to Paul when he had lacked. Uh, uh, for that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome. And when the government supplied, supplied that stuff during the uh, uh, Depression, what did they supply you with? They stand, stood in these food lines. My mother said they would stand here all day. And what would they get? A soup and a piece of bread. Uh, no, uh, it wasn't their daily need. I think my mother would stand all day in line for a, a, a box of oranges. You know, they, they would, or they would get something they really didn't want. My, my grandmother worked for Stolpers in the kitchen. She used to be home stays to a month or two. Well, my <laughs> father, my I father, had, coat. <laughs> and, and they would do what? Huh? They were in her coat. Uh, they would give her a black finger discount. Oh, well, uh, my father had a good job, and then he decided I'm leaving that job. So he went, uh, he left that job to get this, uh, get involved in a business that went down. And I think he got involved in another business that went under, and then he started his own business. He, he went from, uh, he went from uh, uh, the land of plenty to the land of nothing by starting his own business. And it went from, you know, dollars to pennies. And I remember, uh, I don't remember the woman saying, there was somebody down the street, and we, at that time we were in the Mennonite church, it was called Friendship Church, which was a satellite church of the church we ended up getting saved at later on in our 30s out in Aurora. It was a satellite church out here at, uh, in uh, Southgate was the church in the woods. It's now the church in the surrounded by what? Stores. Stores, apartments, everything else. The church in retail. It was uh, <laughs> the church in the retail. Yeah, and it's surrounded by everything but the uh, woods, you know. And uh, we went there, and my fifth grade, my fifth and sixth grade teacher, last name was Miller. <laughs> And then when we went to this church out in Aurora, I found out that the elder in the church, his name was Miller, and that my teacher's name, who was still alive, who lived up here, his last name was Miller, and they were brothers. And then I found out, well, that church when I was a kid, when we went there, when I was really, really little, you know, I could have been five or six, seven years old, 
And I think we only went there a couple of years. I mean, to say we were Mennonite, we were just, we just went to church there. And, uh, you know, it's a small world. 30 years later, I meet their relatives. It was a mission church, you know, like you had missions. And then when I found out about missions in the Mennonite uh, community, and, and we brought that up because missionaries were coming in, and uh, they were discussing what they were doing. Uh, one group came in, they, they were missionaries to, uh, I believe it was in Kentucky. <coughs> or not, I'm not talking about normal gene. Missionaries in Kentucky or West Virginia, and their mission was to build uh, not a well, a, a cistern, I think. Mm -hmm. They were building cisterns. And I talked to the uh, preacher about it. I said, well, where's Jesus? Is where's Jesus in any of that? Because I just get that saved. I was listening to the Almost Christian radio station for a long time. And uh, they weren't giving out the gospel, so I, uh, I confronted the preacher about it. I said, all that is is a mission of good works. I said, where's Jesus in any of that? And he said, you know, he said that's a good point. He said, I'm going to ask him. <laughs> I remember the people distinctly. I don't remember their names. They were the nicest people. I'm not saying they were evil people. They were the nicest people. It was a husband and a wife. I don't think they had any children. And they were both very young, but they were building a cistern in a, in a town, probably for hillbillies. And, uh, and the whole church was there. It seemed like it was a Sunday night. And a Sunday night service there was, wasn't nothing like you would consider to be a Sunday night service. And I remember there were a lot of people there. And, and uh, so then it was time for question and answer. Question, well, the preacher raised his hand. He said, well, where's Jesus in any of that? He did ask him. He said, well, where's the gospel there? I don't think they even knew how to respond. He was, uh, and they were out of that church. And so he confronted them, and they did not have any response that was intelligible other than, uh, you know, buy your butter at Walmart. I mean, they, they didn't know what to say. And it really got me under conviction as to what are we doing here. But part of the ministry, though, is giving. And not just giving the gospel, but giving where people are lacking. I mean, uh, I, I think it's the Salvation Army that started this. Does the Salvation Army give out the gospel? And then I think they said, well, uh, who, who is that? Uh, who's the founder of that? Well, Booth. Booth, William Booth. I th I'm pretty sure they started it. Is why should we just give these hungry men the gospel? What do they do first? A meal. They feed them first, then give them the gospel. I think they're the ones that started it. Maybe, maybe they weren't. But they, get, they feed them first. And then they give them the yeah, gospel. About now. Oh yeah, it's just uh, just kind of too bad. Anyway, uh, it was uh, whatever was lacking to Paul, others had supplied. So that is part of the ministry, folks. That we are. Just, oh, I gave this story that we went from uh, the land of plenty because my dad worked at Fayette Airflex, and if anybody knows anything about. Faywick, it, that became Eat and Clutch and Break. Anybody heard of Eat and Clutch and Break? It's on the west side. It's on Clifton? Yeah. It's over that way. Eat and Clutch and Break. I don't know what's going on at Eaton anymore or Eat and Clutch and Break. It, it, it's a big thing. I mean, they, they, they supplied a lot of men their living. My dad was a uh, production manager. I think he wanted to become vice president, and he, uh, he didn't get the job, so he quit. So we went from the land of plenty. I mean, my mom and dad, they had some money. And they went from that to poverty. And I remember they had no food. And there was a woman, it could have been somebody either out of the Mennonite church or somebody that they knew from the, just the uh, local uh, 
the grade school and heard of our plight that there was no food. And um, I think the woman came by with a big basket of food for him. And they never forgot that. You help somebody like that, they'll never forget it. First Corinthians nine. Verse twelve. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power. Now the power he's talking about is in verse 11, the verse before, if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? In other words, spiritual and physical things. So he had the power to reap the, the physical things if he had supplied the spiritual things, but he didn't use the power to get those physical things. He didn't do that. But it's more blessed to give than to receive. There again is is the giving of physical things. Uh, the, uh, the idea is, uh, the other word that's used, and we probably not going to other verses like that, is if I have, commu the word is communicated, if I have get communicated unto you spiritual things, the, to, to, to communicate means to give spiritual or, or give physical things. Not, not as you and I think of communicating on, on Facebook, you know, it means the, the act of giving and receiving. Uh, verse 28, Ephesians 4, 28, if you turn there. <clears throat> this, this art of giving and receiving is more blessed to give than to receive. But him that stole, steal no more, or right, the five-finger discount. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. So if a man uh, stops stealing, goes out and makes an honest living, and then with that honest living, uh, gives to those that have need. Now, uh, does the government work? Is that an honest living? If you listen to uh, the one that teaches at Georgetown, and he sometimes, not lately, he was on Mark Levin lately, and he would take Rush Limbaugh's spot when he's on vacation at times. I can't think of his name. Uh, Williams? Uh, Walter Williams. Uh, he teaches economics. Mm -hmm. And basically, then what are taxes? Legalize what? Legalize theft. Legalize thievery. They take your money and give it to someone else. And who, which party is more willing to do that than any party? The Democrats. Well, all of them. But especially the Democrats, yes. Ephesians 428. It's not in your notes? It is in the notes. 428. Uh, go get a job so that you can supply. It's, it's, uh, the government in taxation is nothing more than legalized thievery. This uh, new uh, this new thing that's shooting her mouth off, she got elected in New York. She wants to in increase the uh, margin or increase the taxes on the wealthy, not on you and I, to 70%. And uh, all that is is legalized theft, taking it from one group and giving it to another. And I, I weigh this, that these people that are, these new, these new people getting in, all it is is who's got the biggest flap to them. I mean, they just got a big mouth, they got enough dumb people to vote for them. And they can't, and they can't shut up and no one can shut them down. Uh, I think she majored in economics, so she, she couldn't figure out her own checkbook. But she sure can figure out what's in her bank account. <laughs> And uh, anyway, uh, the idea is go earn a living, and then with your surplus, you can give to those that have a need. A need, giving it away. Uh, Matthew 10, 
And there's other verses to support all of this. Matthew 10, the Gospel of Matthew. 10, verse 8. Uh, now this is when he sends out the 12, he also sends out the 70 the same way, gives them the, these powers to cast out devils, <coughs> uh, heal sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Uh, <coughs> how do we do that today? Send to the doctor uh, spiritually. Uh, we, we we certainly cannot. We uh, it said did it say cast out devils? Mm -hmm. Oh, heal the sick. You give them the word of God. Give them the word of God, and with that they get saved. And that cast out the devil. And that, and that cast the devil out. They are dead. I mean, we could spiritualize all this. We are dead in trespasses and sins. You're no longer dead, you're made alive, healing the sick. I mean, they're, they're, they're as sick as it gets, man. You have the equipment who were once dead and sinful. Exactly. So we spiritualize. That's how we do that, by giving out the gospel, and they get saved. Freely ye have received, freely give. We give that out freely. Uh, but if, if you want to go physically, send them to the doctor, help them out with their needs. You know, but my God shall supply all of them. You know, we've all heard the jokes about the flood and the guy, he's on the, he, he vacates the first floor, goes to the second floor, the boat comes along and says, top in, right? And the, the joke, well, God didn't, I want God, and then he ends up on the roof. Finally he drowns, you know, the helicopter comes in, finally he drowns, and God says, well, I tried to help you, but you just, you just didn't, uh, listen, folks, God uses people to help us. God, obviously from this, uh, we are to comfort others, if we go to 2 Corinthians in our giving, comfort others with the comfort that we've been comforted with. So as you and I have been comforted by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, we're to comfort them the same way. And so we comfort, we are to give. It's, it's a, a, a life of giving, not of taking. Uh, it's like a husband and wife. Uh, they give to each other and so on. You give to your children and so on. All right, back if you would to Acts chapter 20, uh, verses 36 through 38, this last point in our W's. There was the work of Paul, the walk of Paul, the witness of Paul, the warning of Paul, the weeping of Paul. Uh, they wept because they would not see his face any longer. It, they were uh, going away. Uh, my sister was in, in uh, and I didn't read about it, but uh, she lives in Minnesota. My other sister did not come up for the funeral. She lives in Texas. She lives in San Antonio. Is it hot down there? That's the word for it. It's not the word for it. <laughs> it's, it's hot. And that's not the word for it. My other, my sister that did come in, she lives in Minnesota. Is it cold up there? <laughs> and that's not the word for it either. But my, uh, my, both my sisters have been gone forever. My sister went down to San Antonio 40 years ago. A long time ago, she moved down there, joined the Air Force, and she's basically been gone ever since. She'll come up here to visit my mother, but she's been gone forever. And my other sister, my brother-in-law, worked for uh, 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 Sears. Was, was it, a, he probably figured it was a good time to get out. He got out. 30 or more than 30 years ago, maybe 40 years, almost 35 years ago, he got out. He was uh, ran a, uh, the hardware department. He took early retirement. And, and probably Sears was already seeing the handwriting on the wall back then. And so they were offering, you know, get these guys out of here. 
because we want to hire cheaper help. And, and he, he cut ties and went to Colorado, from Colorado to Iowa, from Iowa to Minnesota. They've been gone forever. So there's no great weeping if they've been already gone forever. Now, when my sister did go to San Antonio, she, she cried. I remember we had a going away party for her, and she cried. Uh, but uh, they knew that he wasn't going to see him any longer. And so the separation that my sisters had with their, with, with their mother, they've already been separated a long time. Right? They rarely saw her. And then there was no communi real communication for, we'll say, up to a year because my mother could not, you, you couldn't carry out a real conversation. And those that did, I was wondering, I don't, she didn't carry it on with us, but uh, as far as a real conversation, so those ties were breaking off. But here, this was going to be now forever. Oh, and my sister did say, well, basically their home is not Cleveland. Not that we grew up in Cleveland, but when, you know, you say to people from other parts of the country, you don't say Bedford, or you don't say Parma, or Solon, you say Cleveland. So people get, I know where you're from, Cleveland, the Cleveland area. They have no ties in Cleveland. There's no affinity here. And so there's, uh, that, that weeping is long over. That weeping is long over. So here, though, the tie was going to be broken. The weeping of Paul. Uh, verse 36, there is a paragraph marking there. That is the last paragraph marking in the King James Bible. There's no more paragraphs mar markings after that. And I don't know the reason for that, but there, there must be a, a reason. They just didn't do it. That's the last paragraph marking you're going to find. So divisions that you find from there on, you, you have to uh, search for them on your own. All right, if we were to outline this, verse 36, the prayer. He prayed with them all, verse 36. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him. The passion. So there's this great emotional distress of this soon uh, our last one, and that is parting, the parting. Sorrow most of all that they should see his face no more, the parting. Now, people don't part. How is it that people don't part today? I, I mean, I'm not involved in this. But how is it people don't part today? Facebook? Give me another one, another word. Uh, that's exactly where we're going. Facebook? The mail. The, the mail. mail, yeah. But people don't do that. They do phone. But Facebook, I'll talk about the uh, computer, and you want to see the person. What's that called? FaceTime. FaceTime? What was it called before that? Is it Skype. Skype? Do people do Skype? Yeah. Or is that, you know what? What's going to happen is what you think is modern, and it, it's, it's kind of like I still agree with the old way. Well, I see machines already on the auction block that I consider brand new machines, and, and they're third and fourth generation obsolete already. Skype will be Skype will be on the ash heap of history. No, it won't. Oh, I don't. I, don't say it, no, it won't. All the computer, all the information is funneled through the the Microsoft servers, and if they want to. They can fish for the bad people. They think they're bad people of what they're talking about. Well, I'm just saying that there's going to be new inventions, brothers and sisters, that you and I don't know, can't even imagine yet. Exactly. That they've only been, uh, in, you know, only thought of on, uh, uh, on in movies or in these series. You know, Beat me up, Scotty, that kind of stuff. <laughs> the prayer, the passion, and the pardon. And then the only time the pardon will ultimately be ultimately over the slumber in glory. Amen? Uh, now, here, Paul's ministry is about to be passed on to others. For some it be counted again that the church may grow, having been hindered by Paul. You know, some, some consider that, you know, this, this guy, the church isn't going to grow like this. 
What do we need here to have the church grow? And that doesn't mean the church will grow. But God's blessing, you know, let's get carnal about it. What do we need here? What? We need what? A meal every Sunday. A meal every Sunday. We need drums. We need, we need a saxophone. We, we need a uh, trumpet. Yeah, where is that trumpet, buddy? <laughs> do we need the trumpet? Uh, but we need all that kind of, uh, Man, we need a curriculum. Man. That guy's Sunday school. We need to get the curriculum. We need to get some best preachers in here. We need to have a woman preacher come in here once in a while. Dress down, Dre church. dress down church day, yeah. We need two services, one for the cool kids and one for us nerds, you know. <laughs> Traditional service and contemporary con Right, and on and on it goes. And I've noticed that a lot of times when dad dies out and son takes over, some of these ministries just mushroom and morph into something. I, I don't know what it is. I, I talk to people where I actually do the work in the church and supply all the nameplates, and those that were from the old church say, man, they don't want to go back to the new church. They don't want any part of it. They say, we're out of here. But for others, it causes pain knowing the end of a godly ministry was at hand. Folks, it comes and goes. The church does not rely on this building, on me, or on you. The church is going to go on. It's still going to go on. And, and good people come and go. And then somebody else will fill those shoes. Right? I'm not going to live forever. You know, and, and so on. It's, it's going to go on. Not here. Pardon? Not here. N not here. It, it, it could go on this physically in this location, but man, they come and go. I mean, come on, 20 years ago, there was nothing here. There was a building, uh, a house, a building, and we didn't need 20 years ago. I'm just rounding off the numbers. 20, there was a hole in the ground here. Uh, there, was, there was a house, people lived in it, and then that was a... Uh, a VFW hall, the smallest VFW hall you would ever want to see. And, there, and a hole in the ground here. There was no business here. And the city did not want us here. Why don't they want us here? Because we don't pay taxes. We don't pay property tax, so who wants the property tax in Bedford? The school system. We don't pay property tax. We pay line tax. We pay some sort of taxes. Let's keep the power on here. But the city doesn't want us here because we don't hire people. And you hire people, you pay income tax. You pay a, with, a withholding tax. That's how the government makes money is on that withholding tax, folks. And anytime that the government comes in to enhance your business, it's only how to get you to hire more people so their revenue goes up. They have no concern for your business. They just want you to hire people to raise and get more income withholding tax from the labor that men and women put into the company so they can clean off the taxes that they feel is owed them. Shake hands and Father bless the preaching now to follow. In Christ's name, amen. So as. Acts 20.